Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printy here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to build a simple chat application using Flask, Flask SQL Alchemy, a little bit of jQuery, and an API called Pusher. So first, let me show you what the chat does. So if I type a message here on the left-hand side, so typed in the left-hand side, and hit post, I'll see it appear on the right-hand side. And if I say typed in the right-hand side, then as you expect, I'll see it here on the right hand and the left hand. So it's basically like I'm chatting with myself. Hey, hi, and so on. So we see the messages appearing here in the chat. So this is a very basic chat application, and this is exactly what I'll be building in this video. So pusher is the tool that I'll be using to enable the real-time functionality between my different chat instances. In this case, they're both on my machine, but in practice, they will be two different users who are using the chat app. And basically, Pusher is a nice API because it takes care of all the things that are associated with real-time functionality for you. So basically, all you have to do is call the API from your server when you want to push something to the server, and then you listen for those messages that are sent to the server on the client side using the library that they give you. And these libraries are very easy to use. And as you'll see in this tutorial, most of the tutorial is not focused on Pusher because Pusher is so simple to use. It's basically one API call to send a message to the server, and then one event in your JavaScript to listen for messages from the server, and that's it. Like It's very straightforward to use. Um, if you use something like Socket.io before, you may know that it can be pretty tricky to get working, especially when you move to a server that's not on your local machine. It can be a nightmare to use, but when you use something like Pusher, it becomes very simple because Pusher takes care of all that extra stuff for you. So it may seem like a library or an API that doesn't do much for you, but when you think about all of the extra steps that you have to take to get real-time functionality working in your app outside of the code, that's when Pusher becomes great because it takes care of all that stuff for you. Like the code is simple in both cases, but the setup is much, much easier using Pusher. So when you sign up for Pusher, you can sign up using a free account and the free account is going to let you have so many connections and so many messages. For most purposes, that will be enough, especially if you don't have that many users. And of course, if you have more need, then you can sign up for one of the paid plans. But in our case, we're just going to use the free plan for this video. And then when you sign up, you'll get to a dashboard like this. And this is where we're going to create a new app for Pusher. So we'll see, it's pretty easy to use. And by using this, we'll be able to create a chat application very, very easily in Flask. To get started, the first thing I want to show you is the template that I've built. So this is just what my app is going to look like, but it doesn't actually do anything. So it has two parts to it. It has this modal here where I type in some username and then press start chatting. And then it has the part where the modal is disabled. So if I go here, and remove that class manually because there's nothing dynamic here to remove it for me. I'll have to implement that. If I take the is active off, I now get what I want the chat to look like. Of course, all these are placeholders, but this is basically the idea that I'm going for. So at the bottom, there's a text input and a button to post a message. And then above are all the messages that have been posted in the chat. And I did this using Bulma the CSS library. So if you want to check that out, you can, but it just takes so long to get all the HTML working correctly that I wouldn't want to make a video that included that because the video will be really, really long. It took me over an hour to get this working. So now that you see what I have, and if you just look at it, here's basically the same article section repeated over and over again for the chat. And then at the bottom you have the modal and that's pretty much it. There's not much to this chat app. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get a new app up and running on Pusher. So what I'll do is I'll go to the Pusher dashboard and I'll create a new app. And I'll let the name of the app be the default and I'll keep the cluster as the default as well. And then for the front end tech, I'm going to choose either vanilla JavaScript or jQuery. It doesn't really matter. 
What these are going to give you is some sample code to get you up and running. But it doesn't really matter what you choose. The The main point is that you have your uh, authentication keys and your secret to use it. The code is going to be different for every language, of course, but you know the API is going to be similar for every language, even though the syntax will be different. So I'll just choose jQuery as the front end. And then for the back end, I'll look for Python. So where's Python? There we go. And then I'll create my app. So here's the sample code that I was talking about. On the left-hand side is some sample JavaScript, and on the right-hand side is the sample Python code. And it's actually pretty much all we need to create this chat app. Uh, we'll change the names of some things, but this is pretty much it. We'll obviously have to put this code in the right place in our chat app, but this is all we need. So basically the Python side pushes or triggers an event, and the pusher, library on the the client side will subscribe to that event and when that event happens it will do something so basically the idea behind the chat is whenever they press that chat button it will send that message to your server so your flask server the flask server will send that message to pusher and then pusher will send that message back to your clients. And the reason why you do it this way is so you can do something with that information in between. You could have the clients talk to each other directly without going through the server, but for our purposes, we want to be able to save all the messages that are sent. So we're going to have all the messages go through our server first, and then we can forward the messages over to pusher when uh, we're done with whatever you want to do with those messages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first install Pusher. So it's just pip install Pusher. And it should only take a moment. And then what I'll do here is I'll copy this code here and I'll put it in my app. So I'm going to reorganize it. And right now my app has nothing in it. I'm going to reorganize it a bit, but this is basically it. So Really, the only thing that I have to move around is this last line, this pusher underscore client dot trigger. And let's see if pusher is, in, is done installing. And it is. Okay, so let's put a flask app around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from flask, import flask. Then I'll instantiate the flask app. So app flask underscore underscore name. I can leave the pusher client sub there and I'll create a route. I'll call it the index and I'll return the index. So it's not going to return the template quite yet, but I'll import render template for when I do do that. So render underscore template. And then inside of the index for now, I'll just put this pusher underscore client dot trigger here. And this is going to send a hello world message to the front end or to a pusher, which is going to be sent to the front end. So just remember that pusher is in between everything. I'm not interacting with my front end directly in this way. I'm going through pusher and then pusher goes to my front end or my client, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So now I want to take the code from the JavaScript part and integrate it into my template. So if I go back and take a look here, I'm not just going to copy this directly because it has a lot of stuff that I already have in the template. So I'm just going to look for the stuff that I don't have. So for one, I don't have the script for pusher. So I'll go ahead and put that in my template and I'll just put everything for the scripts at the bottom of the file. So down here. So I'm getting the script for pusher and then I'm going to use these script tags to basically listen for what's happening. So if you look at the code here, this is just some debug code so we can see what's going on in the console. This is similar to the part in Python where you're basically putting in your information. You'll notice that on the Python side that you have more information because this is your server. So this is what's sending the messages to pusher. So you have to use more authentication. Whereas on the client side, you're just subscribing to some instance of pusher, some pusher app. So you don't need to have all the information. You just need to have uh, one thing, which is the, the key. 
So you don't have to have the secret like you do on the Python side, but you do have to have the key so you can listen to messages. You can't modify anything, so it's still secure. But on the server, you can modify things, so you have to have all of your information correct to use it. And then down here, we have this pusher.subscribe. So I'm going to subscribe to a channel called My Channel, which is the channel that is being triggered here in Python. And then it's going to listen for an event called My Event, which is triggered here in Python. And then whatever the message is, it's going to alert it. So you see data.message is going to get alerted. It's basically being passed through this data parameter here. And then the message here, in this case, is hello world. So now I'll render that template. And the name of the template is index.html. And now I will start up my Flask app. Put it in a debug mode, just like that. Okay, so let's go to our page for the server and we see that nothing happens. So what's the problem here? We see hello world now, but we didn't see it the first time we ran the page. Well, the, the reason why that happened is because of the order that things occurred on the page. So if I go back to my code, we see that first it triggers the event and then it returns the template. And the template has the information for uh, reading any event that happened. So basically, this event is being triggered before this has a chance to subscribe. So that's why it's a little messed up in the order, but the point of this was to show you that at least I can get the messages, even though the, the order of the code is messed up. As I build this out, the order of the code will obviously become correct. All right, so now the first thing that I want to do is I want to allow the user to enter their username. So let me go back to this and what I'll do is I'll comment out this so it doesn't alert that anymore and I'll temporarily comment out that because we don't need to worry about sending a message yet so what I want to do is I want to allow for the user to create a username so let me go to that modal and I'll make it is active again so is underscore or is dash active and I'll refresh the page and now we see this so what I want to be able to do is basically type in a name. So let's say Anthony. And then when I click start chatting, it will save that name and use that name anytime I send a message. So what I'll do here in my script somewhere, and I'll just put this here at the top. I'll use some jQuery to get the data from that input. So first thing I'll need to uh, use the script to get jQuery. So I just copied it and I just paste it there. You can get this from any jQuery CDN. I got this one from the jQuery site itself. And now what I'll do is I'll give that username input an ID so I can access it directly. So I'll call this username input. And then I'll do the typical jQuery stuff. So let's see the function looking for if the page is ready and then I want to get the value of that username input so let username equals um, username underscore input dot val and this has to be the result of some kind of trigger and that trigger is going to be me clicking on the button so where's that button uh, class is info. So, okay, so I'll give this a class of or an ID of start chat, which is the start chatting button. Okay, so I'm going to bind a click event to this. So, what is this called? Start chat on click. And on click, I'm going to basically grab the username. So I'll just move this up here. And I'll alert it, just so we can see that it's working. So with all that, I can refresh the page. Um, let my username be Anthony. And I'll hit start chatting. And then we see up here, my name appears in the alert. So I know that I'm able to 
get the name correctly. And the next thing I want to do is I want to remove that class from the modal so it turns off. So basically, after I get my username, I'm going to say something like uh, modal. So there's only one modal, so I can just reference the class. And then remove class is active. So it starts off as active, and then when you click on the button, it should grab the username and make it go away. So if I put in Anthony again, hit start chatting. Now it goes away because I've removed that class from the modal. Okay, so now that I have that, I can actually just keep it like that because getting the username is always going to be the first thing I do in my app. Like when I start the page, the first thing I'll do is get the username. So I'm always going to have that username available for me. And now what I'll do is I will work on the actual chat functionality. So where is my input for the chat? I believe it's at the top. Here we go. So we have this input class text. So I'll just call this chat text. And then I'll give the button a name as well or an ID. We'll say chat button. So chat text and chat button. So now in here, what I'll do is I'll say when the chat button gets clicked, so on click, I'm going to do something. So just to make sure that this is working correctly, I'm going to just say alert chat button clicked. And then we'll see. So I have to choose a username again. And then if I click here, I get the chat button clicked. Okay, so this is where everything is going to happen in the app. And as you see, if I continue posting, then it will continue popping up with that alert. So I know it works for multiple inputs. So chat button clicked. And just to make sure I still have access to my username here, I'll alert the username anytime the chat button is clicked. And we'll see if that causes a problem, which it might. So start chat, post, and we see it's causing a problem. And that is because if we look at the debug log or the console log, it says username is not defined. And the reason why it's not defined is because I use let inside of this function here and it's local to that particular function scope. So what I'll do is I'll initialize it out there and then I'll just update it inside of the function. So now I'll add my username, Anthony, hit post, and I see Anthony there. So now that's working as I expected, and it's alerting twice. So I can get rid of both of those alerts because I don't need them for anything. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take the text that was typed in and do something with it. So first I need to make sure I can get that text. So the text is going to be, let's see, chat, what did I call it? I already forgot. The, the input ID, chat text. So chat text is the name of the ID. So chat underscore text just get the value of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this into an alert just to make sure that I can get it. Username again, Anthony. And then I'll type something down here. Here is some chat text. I'll post. And I see here is some chat text there. So, so far everything is working pretty well. I can remove that alert because I know it works. And now what I want to do is I want to think about adding more things to the chat. So right now I have all of these things that say John Smith and some gibberish in Latin. 
what I want to do is I want to be able to append to that and add something that looks the same, but with different text. So what I'll do is I will create kind of a, a template for this. So I'll, I'll create it up here. I'll call this a message template and I'll use the back ticks to specify that it is a template. And actually I'll have to move this down, but for now what I can do is I can take the HTML for one of the article parts, which makes up what makes a message here. And I can just put that into the back ticks and remove everything that is specific to what was happening before and just make it a variable. So this one is going to be message, a variable that I haven't created yet. And this one is going to be name also a variable that I haven't created yet. But you see that a message is only made up of two things really, a name and the actual message text. So let me just move this over so it looks a little bit better. There we go. And like I said, I'll probably move that down, but for now I'll keep it right there. And the name is going to be test, just so I can make sure everything works. And the message is going to be this is a test message. Okay, so with those two things, I should be able to have this message template update automatically with the text. And now what I want to do is I want to simply append this message to the, to the page so I can see it update. So what I'll do is I will first add an ID to the div that contains all of the messages. So I just need to go to the top where the messages are. And the ID is content, so I already have the ID there. And for now, I'll just make an on click of the chat button. It wouldn't actually be on click of the chat button because what I want to do is I want to send the message to Pusher and then when the message gets returned by Pusher, then it updates. But just for testing purposes, since this is the only thing I have control over for now, I'm going to put it in here. So inside of that content ID, so content, I'm going to append that HTML. So message template, just like that. So every time I click the button, I should get this template put into the page. So I'll refresh, I'll create another username, start chatting, hit post. And we see I have, this is a test message down here and it keeps adding the test message every time I click. So we see that that is working as expected. So obviously we're not going to add, this is a test message. Every time someone chats, we're going to add the actual message that they type in, but this is an intermediate step so we can get it working. It's always a good idea to test every little thing as you go along because it's not often that you can just write a bunch of code without testing and then get it to work at the end. Uh, I don't know if anybody can do that. So you just want to test as you go. Just little things, make sure every little thing works and then you can add to it when you find that it does work. So I'll remove that because I know it works or I'll just comment it out because I'll actually use it somewhere else. But now that I have all that, now I'm interested in using Pusher. Well, actually, no. Before I get to Pusher, what I want to do is I want to be able to send the message that the user types in to the Flask app. Because remember, the Flask app is going to send that message over to Pusher. So what I'll do is I'll create a new route. And I'll call this route, let's say, message. And this is going to take post requests only because I'm only going to send a message. So we'll call this message and then it's going to return some JSON objects. So uh, just sonify. So return just blank for now. I'll fill that in in just a moment. And now what I want to do is I want to handle that incoming message. So basically for each each message, I'm going to be expecting two things. I want the actual name of the user who typed the message and the message they typed in. So I'm looking for two things. So I'll just create two variables here, username and message, and then using requests. So I need to import that as well. I'll use requests and I'll send this as 
let's say JSON data. So request JSON get and then a username. And then request JSON get message. And as an intermediate step, I'll make sure that I can actually get those before going any further. So I'll save that. And then I'll go to the index here. And what I'll do is I will create this. So post to, let's say message. The data that I want to post is just a username. So let's type in Anthony as a test or a test just to make it a little more clear that this is a test. I'm not using the real data yet. So username and then the message. And the message is this is a test message. Okay, so I'm going to send that JSON object over to my Flask app. And then it's going to have, it's going to do something when it's done. Remove that M and add a comma. There we go. Okay, so now every time I click the button, it should send this test message over to Flask, and I should be able to see it pop up on the command line if everything works. If it doesn't work, then I'll probably get some kind of error. So start chatting, just click post, and it tells me none type object has no attribute get. I'm using JSON in kind of a weird way. So what I'll do is I'll call this message data equals request get JSON. And then from there, I'll just get the keys. So message data is going to be username and then message data of message. So depending on how you send the data, you will kind of receive it in a different way in Flask. You can send it as JSON data, you can send it as form data, you can send it as URL parameters, but in this case, I'm using JSON. I was thinking about using it as a form. So let's see if it works now. Start chatting, post, let's see if it airs. None type object is not subscriptable. So once again, it's not sending JSON data. So that must mean that my app, the client side is not sending to my server using JSON data. So if I do this here, by using the developer tools, I'll be able to determine how it's being sent. So message is what's being sent. And if I look at the request headers, if I look at the content type, you see the content type here is form URL encoded. So I can either change my code to send JSON or I can change my Python code to accept a form. So let's try the form. So instead of using JSON, I'll actually remove everything that I did before and just change this to form and we'll see if this works well. Start chatting posts and it looks like it worked. Okay, so now we can see test and this is a test messages, test message. So it's really important to make sure that the data that you are sending from the client is expected by the server. Otherwise you'll get an error like I was getting. I thought I was going to get JSON data, but instead I got form data. So that's why I had to go through that little process there. And that's actually a common thing that people deal with. So hopefully you understand uh, what's going on there and you have to change one side to use the data that the other side is using. Really doesn't matter which side. Uh, it, it depends on what you're doing exactly, but you know, if your client is sending form data, then your server needs to expect form data. If your server is expecting JSON data, then you might want to have your client send JSON data. So it just depends on how you want to do it. But anyway, I got the username and message to appear here. So now what I want to do is remove that and basically, I'll say something like, as long as there are no errors here, I'll return like a success. So 
I'll return adjacent object using, I'll just say results and then success. And just sonify around this. And if anything happens in here, I'll return failure. Now I'm not going to do anything in the error case. So we're not going to see that in this video, but if you wanted to have more error checking, then this is something you can do. Obviously you can do this in multiple ways, but this is just a quick way to do it. And because I won't be doing anything with the error case in this video, we don't really have to worry about it. And I just crashed my app by using the wrong indentation. So basically here I have the, the message and the username getting retrieved from what the client sends. And then I'll just return either result or failure depending on if that works or not. So if I just do this one last time and then look at the response, we see result success. You don't have to worry about this error happening with pusher because I'm not actually using it yet. So it's not a big deal, but I can go ahead and close that. So now we see we can send messages to the server. We can update the chat whenever we want. So the last thing we want to do is we want to actually integrate pushers so we can have the chat part working. So here I'm going to take this pusher client trigger and I'll remove it from the index because it shouldn't be there. And now I'll put it inside of the message route because this is where it's going to actually be useful. So basically the idea is I'm going to get the message in the username and push that over to pusher. So I'm going to call this chat channel and the event is going to be new message, just like that. And the message key is going to be the same, but the value is going to be that message variable. Then I'll also add a username key if I can do that. It's not cooperating when I press the key. Okay, so username, and then it's going to be the username variable. So it's going to pass two things over to pusher, the username and the message. And then on the client side, what's going to happen is it's going to retrieve that. So I'll move this code up into my jQuery section. And basically it's just like any other event so just move everything over. And move this over just a little bit more. Okay, there we go. And then I need to subscribe to the same channel. So it's going to be chat channel. And then I need to bind this to new message because that's what I named it on the server, right? So new message, yeah. And then I'm going to alert whatever the message is just to make sure that's working. So here what I need to do now is instead of posting this test message, I'm going to post, well actually I can leave this here just as a test. So refresh the page, start chatting, hit post and we see this is a test message pops up. So what happened there is when I click post, it sent that test message over to my Flask server. Flask sent that message to Pusher, and then Pusher sent that message to my front end here. So now I can use the actual values. So here, instead of using test and test message, what I'll do is the username is going to be the username that I have used, so username. And then the message is going to be this here. So I'll create a variable called message. And oh, I'm actually doing the wrong thing there. Let me put that back. It's the other thing where I was getting the message. Did I remove it already? I think so. Okay, not a big deal. So I'll just create it again. So let message equal, uh, I believe, chat text chat input I forgot again so I'll scroll up to that input it's chat underscore text so chat underscore text is the input 
and I want to get the value of it. So every time they click on the button, it's going to get the value of that text. It's going to take it and then it's going to put it in this dictionary or this object here since I'm in JavaScript and that was too much. Copy message and then paste it there. Okay, there we go. So now it should be sending the actual message that I type in. So if I restart the app again, type in my username, start chatting. This should be what I have typed in. So hit post and we see this should be what I have typed in. So now we know that everything is working correctly on that part. So we know that the message is getting sent to Pusher through Flask. So now what I want to do is I want to append any new message that comes in to, I want to append any new message that comes in to the chat so I can see it. So now I can take that code that I have here. So this message template stuff, and now I can get it working correctly. So here, what I want to do is I'll copy all of that and I'll put it inside of my click handler. Just like that. And then the name, and I actually put that, I'm putting this in the wrong spot. This doesn't get triggered when we click the button. It gets triggered when a new message comes in from pushers. So it actually goes down here. So what I want to do is I want to make the name be data username. So this is the data that's coming in from pusher and the message be data message. And then I can take that append that I had or I just removed. Did I remove it? Okay, I did. So I'll just add it back underneath here. So content append and then message template. So this is exactly the same thing as we had as before, but now instead of using test values, it's going to be using the actual values. So run it again, choose a username. Does this work? Post. And it doesn't work. So let's take a look at any errors that pop up on the console. And message template is not defined. And that's because I left that here. Okay, so it was there. I just missed it. Okay, so let's try that again. Anthony. Does this work? Posts. And it still doesn't work. So let's see. I'm getting the message from Pusher by looking at the thing that happens here in the logs. So it says event received, new message, and then the data that is received, uh, Anthony, and does this work. So all that is working correctly. But for some reason, it is not appending there. So let's see. The new message event is correct, right? So new message, new message. And just to be sure everything is in the right brackets. Yeah, not everything is in the right brackets. Okay, so this content append should be up here. So put that there and I'll move this over. So let's try that again. Does this work? Okay, there we go. So now I see the new message appear whenever I type it in. If I type in something else, post, I get the new message. So now what I want to do is I want to clear out the old message every time I send a new message. So basically when 
this returns, I'm going to clear out the message. So chat underscore text dot val, and I'll just set it to the empty string. That way I can start by typing a new message again. So choose my username, Anthony, test, post. I see test and then my old message goes away. Something else, post, that goes away. Okay, so now that I have all that working, I can remove the, the values here, these placeholders. And what I'll do is I'll remove all but one because they're going to become important again when I retrieve the data from my database. So I'll remove all but one. Save, and now look at the page when I do this. So it's like I have one message, and then second message there. I post, I see the second message, and then third message, and so on. So we see that I can add in new messages anytime I want. And now really the final thing that we want to do is we want to be able to we want to be able to save these messages to the database so anyone who wasn't there for the chat can open up the application later and see everything that was talked about. They don't have to be there as the chat is taking place. They can see the previous conversation. So to do that, I'll have to use Flask SQL Alchemy to interface with the database. So I'll install that really quickly. pip install flask-sql alchemy. And I'll start by importing that. So from flask underscore SQL alchemy, I'm going to import SQL alchemy. And then for my app configuration, I'm going to set the database. So app config, so it's gonna be SQL alchemy underscore database underscore URI. And that is going to be, I'm gonna use a SQLite database. And I'll call this messages.db. So that's done. I'll quickly create the database. So messages.db, whoops, tables, exit. So now I have that messages.db. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a table for it. So just one table. Using SQL Alchemy, we use classes to kind of represent tables in our code. So. The table is going to be called message. It's going to inherit from db.model. I'll create an ID column. So ID is going to be db, or I forgot to um, instantiate the database. So I'll do that here. So db equals SQL alchemy and then pass in the flask app, just like that. And now I can use the db object. So db column. This is going to be an integer. So this is the primary key, the ID. And there are two things that I want to save. I want to save the username, db column, db string, and let's just say 50 characters, and then the message. And that can be up to 500. Okay, so that's it for our database. Pretty simple, that should be primary key equals true instead of just primary key. So now I can create these, or there's one table in the database. I'll start up Python. From my app, I'm going to import db, and then I'm going to use db create all. That will create the table in my database. So if I look at my messages database and type tables, then I see message there. So it's just the one table in my database. So now inside of my message route, in addition to sending the message to Pusher, I also want to save it to the database. So what I'll do is I will, underneath the getting of the username and the message, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object which represents a row for that message. So I'll call this new message and I'll take that message class and instantiate it using the username and the message and then I'll add it to my database. So with db session add, new message, and then db session commit, that should save everything to the database. 
So let's try that out. So Python app. And then what I'll do is go back here, restart Anthony. And I'll just say, is this in the database? I'll post and something failed. Oh no, it didn't fail, it was just slow. <laughs> okay, so is this in the database? It should be now, so I'll stop my app and I'll open up my database again. And then I'll select star from message and we see I have one row in the table. I see my name, Anthony, that's the name I typed into that modal. And then is this in the database? That's exactly the message that I typed in. So now to get all the messages from the database to appear, I'll add in a second message. So another message, post that. And what I'll do is I'm going to query the database for all the messages that I have, and I'm going to display those messages when you start the app for the first time. So this is pretty slow. Oh, that's because my server is not running. That would make it very, very slow. So I'll start up my app again. And I'll choose, how about another username? Let's say pretty printed as the username. Start chatting. Another message in the database. Hit post. And we see it appears there. So now to get all the messages in the database, the first thing I want to do is I want to query the database. So in the index, I'm going to query because I want to send the results of that query to my template so I can loop through the results and display them on the screen. So I'll create a variable called messages and this is going to be message query all. So basically give me all of the messages from the message table. So messages is going to equal messages, which means I'm passing it to the template. And inside of the template, I'm going to loop over the messages. So for message in message and the loop is going to contain the HTML for a single message. So this article tag here. So in four, and then I'll remove the placeholders and replace them with the actual value. So message dot username, and then this will be message, message dot message, just like that. So. If you look here, you can kind of see how this is similar to the template that we have in JavaScript. So this is the article section and it has two placeholders. If we go down to the JavaScript code for message template, it's pretty much exactly the same thing. It's just the syntax is a little bit different. But one gets executed on the server side and gets rendered as soon as the user opens the app and the other happens as new messages come in. So now if I save that and I start my app again, we see nothing. So that means something went wrong. So let's take a look. So for message and message, it should be messages because messages has an S here. So restart again. And we can already see in the background how they're there. So we see, is this in the database? And then we see another message in the database. So now that's pretty much it. If I start chatting and what I'll do is I'll open up another one. So this one has Anthony and I'll use this one as pretty printed. So, Hey there, post a message. Hey there. In my other chat, I see, Hey there as well. If I respond, how are you? And if I go to the other tab, I can see it. So depending on which tab I use, the username will be different, but we can see that I can actually chat between the two tabs. Obviously you wouldn't be chatting with yourself. You'd be chatting with other people using your app, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just chatting with myself. So I'm awesome. And then just more stuff here. And we see that it just appears on both because they're both listening for events from Pusher. So even though we had to go through quite a few steps, 
every single step individually was pretty simple to understand and just combining them was what was needed to get our chat app working. So of course you can extend this. You can extend this to handle the other cases a little bit better. Like this doesn't handle the case of you don't type anything into the text or if you don't supply a username, stuff like that. But you know, that's just a standard error checking that you would do in any app. So if you want to add that, you can. And I'll have the code in a link to the I'll have a link to the code in the description below if you want to get this code and modify it or start with the template that I started with and then build it yourself. But basically, you see that everything here is fairly straightforward. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the video, you can leave a comment down below. Uh, but I suggest you experiment with this. Check out Pusher. It's a pretty cool tool. It makes it really easy to uh, handle things like this. You don't have to worry about your server being able to handle it. And uh, it just saves you a ton of time. You won't have to debug all the server issues that come along with trying to implement something based on WebSockets yourself. So like I said, if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. And if you have subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.